Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus and uh, today we got a nice pair of Cobbler Union boots here that were sent over to us. Come join us and check out how we end up putting a pair of Triumph toe plates on these brand new pair of shoes. So thank you for joining us and uh, as I'd mentioned, we're going to be putting on some brass plated Triumph toe plates like these on the front of these toes here of these uh, Cobbler Union boots. These boots were sent to us directly from the, um, from the company by a gentleman who ordered them and we've done toe plates for him in the past and he wanted to get these taken care of before he even wore them so they're brand new, never worn pair. He's got the same exact model so he knows that these fit him very well already but first things first we got to make sure that the laces are all undone up on the top here because these cobbler unions they do have a little bit of a narrower shaft area here so trying to get this thing to sit on our lasts kind of uh kind of takes a little bit of effort sometimes make sure to take the stuffing out they're really detailed about a lot of things on the inside here on their footbed. It's got that nice uh, quilting pattern on the footbed itself. Looks pretty cool. I like that. Uh, actually, there's more stuffing down in there. Okay, is that? Oh, it wasn't stuffing. That was just the leather. Tricked, uh, tricked me there for a second. Okay. Triumph toe plates, for those of you who aren't familiar with them, they're really designed to help reinforce the toe because everybody's got a little bit of a different walking pattern on how they wear their shoes out. Obviously the heel is usually the first one to get worn out and replacement of heels is not a big issue. It's not very expensive either. Um, it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Uh, but uh, as far as the sole area, however, everyone's got a little bit of a different walking pattern. Somebody will wear, out, wear it out in the ball of the foot here. Bring this a little bit closer in the ball to foot there, some on the inside edge, some on the outside, and then some on the very toe. Now the particular walking style, if you're somebody that wears out the toes the most, um, that unfortunately is, I guess you can say, the most costly version of wearing out a sole, just because there's much less surface area, so the toe wears down quicker, wears through the stitches, and sometimes can even damage the welt. And so, to prevent that from happening too quickly, because having to replace sole after sole just because you wore out that toe and the rest of it still has plenty of wear, it definitely gets a little pricey to do time and time again. So a good option alternative is the toe plates like this. These are the Triumph ones that are brass plated and then there are also the Lulu plates. They're the stainless steel straight cuts like this here. Now, Lulu ones, they come in different sizes. They come uh, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 millimeter, and I believe 90 and even possibly 100. So that's just the different widths and sizes of them. Uh, the Lulu ones are a little bit problematic when it comes to these holes here. They have to be tapped out, drilled a little bit wider and everything just because it seems like these holes were really designed to have nails ran through them and nails don't hold them very well. But running a small screw through that would hold it properly, they definitely have to be customized in other words. Where the Triumph ones, the holes are plenty wide. They come in just this one size. Uh, from what I understand, at least us here in North America can only get the one size here. If there are more sizes in North America, we're not aware of it, unfortunately. Um, they come out of Europe. So it's, uh, it's one of those annoying things that sometimes we have no clue what even exists out there. But um, these are designed to fit a number of different styles just because the way the holes are set up in them. You've got the three holes there for the screws to sit in and so if you've got a bit of a more rounded toe or anything these edges get sand, uh, sanded down and trimmed off and so fit a larger number of uh, different builds of style styles of footwear. Uh, Western boots they fit some styles very well and uh, 
regular dress boots, certain work boots and dress shoes as well. But uh, Triumph toe plates are definitely, definitely a nice way to go for sure. Now, the other thing is some people also think that these are tap dancing for clicking, makes noise or anything. Not really. Tap dancing uh, plates, they're very different. They're designed to be a little bit larger. They fit closer towards the ball of the foot and the heel area. And there's also a special plastic piece that gets wedged in between the metal and the sole itself so that uh, there's a gap and, and that way the metal actually clicks. It kind of bounces around back and forth loosely where a toe plate like this is designed to sit flushly with the sole as much as possible and is secured with screws as tight as possible without uh, stripping the screws or damaging the leather or anything like that um, where it'll just end up popping out. So that prevents any kind of noises. Now obviously if you're somebody that kicks the ground with your foot right there at that toe, it's going to make a little click sound. But your average walking when you're doing normal walking it's not supposed to make much noise. If it does, it may be every now and then type of thing just because of the way you ended up stepping or anything like that. But overall, it's not going to be making noise too much. Now, um, moving on uh, with the Cobbler Union in particular, um, there are other, other build styles too. With Cobbler Union, they do what's called a blind stitch. So basically, they split the leather right here very thinly, fold it open. Sorry, I got dye on my hands and everything. Apologize for the dirty cobbler hands. But uh, they they split that leather, fold it open, stitch it around because these are Goodyear welted. They stitch it all the way around and then take that leather fold, fold it back over and secure it back together. And so it looks like it's not stitched, but in reality it is. Every now and then you might be able to see certain dark points where the stitching was kind of... Uh, leaving a dark imprint I need to take this one off be a little easier to show but you can maybe see just a little bit of a pattern coming around here and that's from the blind stitch you know just because the way that the sole finish ended up looking and everything it ended up settling just right where these stitches ended up being a little visible in other words at least the imprint from them but Moving on now at this point, uh, we're going to start out by marking up where the, oops, where this toe plate is going to go. We use a blade like this. Now toe plates typically they just go onto a leather sole. They don't work very well with rubber soles at all unless you have a protective sole over top of leather. Leather is a denser material so it's much better to secure the toe plate to something dense like leather where rubber still has a little bit of uh, stretchability and give. So right now I'm just marking where this toe plate is going to sit. There we go. And it's just a light marking. You probably won't be able to see it. I can use a pen, but uh, pen still leaves a little bit of a residue. We only do the pens when we need to on a protective sole uh, cover on the on the leather soles and we need to be able to see it better and it's a lot better to see a pen ink marking on the rubber soles. At this point we just start cutting down into it very carefully. It takes a nice steady hand and not always just a steady hand just could take some practice as well, even if you don't have fully steady hand. There's a handful of cobblers out there that do beautiful work, but uh, hands don't look quite steady. But they know how to how to work with even uh, even a shaky hand properly. Okay, so we cut down at a full 90 degree angle, right in these areas where we had them marked down. Now we're gonna take the knife again and start. Cutting into the material here. Now obviously because these are stitched and even though they have a blind stitch on them, the, uh, the toe plates on these need to sit a little bit deeper than what the blind stitch piece or blind stitch fold is sitting at. So we are going to end up basically cutting through the original stitches a bit. Which is fine. 
that's that's actually fairly common when we're having to do this on a brand new pair obviously we would like to try to leave those stitches intact as much as possible but it's very rare that it actually works out There's only a few companies out there that I've come across that had a blind stitch done that was very uh, very thick split that they did so we didn't even end up cutting through the original stitches not even a little bit and it worked out great but majority of the companies they do it like this here so this takes a little bit of patience being careful cutting because we don't want this knife to slide off and hit us or hit the boot or shoe takes a little bit of practice so I don't know if my hat's getting in the way I should probably take that off so it's not in the way I apologize for the messy messy hair barbershop is closed down right now so they can't get my hair cut done and I'm not good at cutting hair myself so not even gonna attempt that I'm a cobbler not a barber way different area of expertise okay now typically we would uh, spray down the sole with some water to make make cutting into it a little bit softer but because these have a finish on them sometimes water will actually leave watermarks on these finishes and I really don't want to mess up this beautiful brand new finish that this gentleman hasn't even seen in person yet because he had them shipped directly to us so I'm gonna put a little bit more effort into it and, uh, and do it this way instead I know I know it's uh it's just the finish it's gonna wear out so on but I want the I want the gentleman who owns these to get these boots in and be like oh man still look like original and everything even with the toe plate so I grabbed a different knife just because this one has a bit of a longer blade on it and that way I can get down a little bit deeper just because on the deepest end I'm still about an eighth of an inch away from that 90 degree angle cut that we made using this blade and I just can't reach it well enough and even though this is a fairly narrow section here it still ends up making the whole blade go a little crooked and wonky and I don't want that to happen so I have to use one of our um, uh, the rip knives this is called a rip knife for uh, cutting through Goodyear welt stitching and splitting the sole away from the welt so I'm gonna have to slowly work my way through it I have to go sharpen this up let me, be, let me go take care of that all right so sharpened it up a little bit probably should have done that before the video but I wasn't uh, wasn't thinking I'd end up actually using this here usually I use a different knife but somebody claimed it from me unfortunately and I have to start using this one now I like the angle of it but it's a little too long for what I what I like usually and our industry cobblers end up uh, we we end up finding a particular tool that we're used to or one that we like or something and and uh, giving it up is a bit of a hard thing to do and it's even worse nowadays because a lot of our tools are starting to get discontinued or manufactured differently than what they used to be and it, it's a shame and drives us crazy having to hunt down what it is that we were used to if we ended up breaking a tool Man, back back here this thing does not want to cut let's try switching back over to this problem also is that um, this knife here as you can tell is a huge difference in thickness so it's a little difficult still using this one so I'm gonna see if I can carefully pull this back and cut it from a different direction a little bit 
Looks like it's working. Yeah, see, I have to cut it from the side now instead of going straight in. So that's uh, that's working fine. Again, not used to this one right here. Kind of annoys me, in other words. All right, so we've got this piece cut out now. Now we just need to touch up any areas that we may need to a little bit. Sometimes some touch up work needs to be done just because we are kind of blindly cutting into the material and it's kind of a deep cut. And when we're doing a blind stitch cut like this here to conceal those stitches underneath, um, we're only going a certain depth and it's quite literally just slicing like that. We're this goes in so deep and the knife shifts up and down a little bit sometimes it uh, doesn't get a fully even surface the first time around so we need to do a light touch up a little bit just a few loose ends here and there every now and then so it's uh, annoying but it comes with uh, comes with the job. Okay, so this is a little bit more of a close-up view for you. It's a little difficult to try to do with the camera kind of being in the way just a little bit. So let me see what I can do about it. Okay, so I'll hold this in place. Shoot. It's a little awkward. Hope you guys are enjoying this view of it because it's definitely definitely a harder angle to do. Don't know if it's visible. You might be able to see a little bit of a marking right there, but that's just the marking there for now. And oh, I gotta take my hat off. It's a in the way again. Okay, just cut straight down. Let's see, where am I? I'm a right handed person, I just tried switching over to left hand on this. So it's a little, little difficult to do. I hope everyone watching is appreciating this. This is a challenge. But I always keep saying I enjoy some challenges. This is a new one for me. I'm trying to do things in such an angle.
I think you guys get the picture of what it is I'm trying to do. So at this point I'm probably going to have to readjust so that I can do this uh, the rest of the way without the camera. So I'm going to do the rest of it off camera. I'm um, cutting it off, but this gives you an idea of how it starts to slowly start peeling up and cutting away. And uh, once we're ready, I'll uh, show you what it's look like, what it's looking like after I'm done cutting. And uh, we'll continue on to our next step on securing these stitches underneath that we ended up cutting through. Again, unfortunately, there's no other alternative unless we're resoling them. And uh, during the resole process, we actually end up cutting all this and getting it ready for the toe plate before we stitch it. And that's usually the steps that we take. But because these soles have already been stitched and we're not replacing them, uh, we do have to cut through the stitches on this particular boot. So let me get that all taken care of, and I'll be back in just a little bit to uh, finish out um, or continue on with the next step. All right, so before we continue on with uh, sealing up these stitches here, just wanted to show real quick that, um, again, we do have to do some customization sometime because this one's designed in such a way where the sole is a little more rounded than what the Triumph toe plates were. I did have to bend them just enough so that they're sitting a little more flushly on the corners and everything. This is what it looks like before, and then that right there is what I did to bend. You can see that gap there, how it's bent there. But uh, sometimes we have to do adjustments like that to make sure it sits in there nicely. This was one that we didn't work on. I'm gonna put it back in the box. But at this point, I'm gonna grab a little bit of a sealant. This is kind of like a super glue. In other words, that's designed for uh, leather and our industry pretty much. And I'm just gonna run it across these areas where the stitches are. These stitches are usually a nylon, and so what happens is, wipe that off a little bit and push it into the stitches better. And what happens with nylon and super glue, so if you ever take like a nylon strap off of a backpack or anything like that, if you put some super glue on there, it has a chemical reaction. It heats up, the smell intensifies, and in some cases it will even smoke up a little bit. And it really actually binds and melts it all together, kind of fusing the nylon fibers. Uh, or, yeah, the nylon fibers together. So that's what we're doing with this. And because of that activation, a chemical reaction, we don't really need to give it too much time to cure or anything. We just put it on and it's all ready to go. So these are all sealed up. Just wanted to show that to anyone that's wondering about when we cut through stitches. You know, unfortunately we have to do it. it the, sh the sole is still going to be held in place very well with the, um, with the adhesive that the sole is glued on with. And it's also held in place with a little bit of stitching that's still running through the sole itself and it goes through the welt. So it's all going to stay and hold up for a very long time. I've never had an issue of them coming apart when we cut through stitches and no other cobbler has either. Unless it's a poor, poor construction, say something that's never been stitched ever. Then in that case, there was no stitching there in the first place and the shoe was constructed poorly and it came apart. It was going to come apart regardless with or without the toe plates in that area. So let me go ahead and uh, grab uh, a few things. Actually, I was going to show you guys one more thing real quick. Let me just all right, so what I wanted to show is that piece that we cut out already. I kind of took it apart just a little bit to show you the blind stitching. So that's what it looks like right here. So this is the sole here, and basically the leather gets split and folded back like that. And so the stitches end up being stitched through right here. And then after it's all done and stitched, this all gets glued back together, and then you start doing the... Uh, stain the finish the bottom finish and all that kind of stuff um but i thought i'd show that it's kind of a neat little area there to be able to show off might even keep this chunk just for that um but as you can tell we ended up cutting through the stitches right there we ended up having to cut more than double just a little bit more than double what the thickness of just the blind stitch uh flap was otherwise if we just did that thin portion Right there, you can tell that metal is significantly thicker than that leather. So, I don't know if it's showing there. Significantly thicker than that leather. But um, that's why we have to cut through the stitches. And, uh, you know, even sometimes uh, 
shoes that don't have a blind stitch they have a open channel stitching so you actually see all the stitch work done um, you know sometimes we're able to cut cut out that piece without actually cutting through the stitches sometimes we end up having to it's unavoidable sorry to say but again you have no concerns whatsoever i mean the the sole is glued on there it's secured very well i mean how do you how do you expect shoes that are manufactured with um with just an adhered on sole where there's no stitching done to it whatsoever some of those shoes hold up for quite some time before they finally start to give out and some of them even start to only give out when the sole needs replacing anyways you know but so with the cobbler union pair they're they're fairly well made so if you got a well-made shoe you have nothing to worry about when it comes to having to cut through those stitches a little bit you know it's uh it's gonna it's gonna be inevitable that we're gonna have to at some point or another cut through a pair of uh, boots or shoes thread okay now before i keep talking too much longer i'm gonna grab my punch all like this line up the toe plate where it's going to be sitting and then just mark off with the punch all straight down where the holes for the screws will be. Start the holes a little bit. Makes it easier to put the screws in. Uh, of course, I forgot to grab my drill. And let me grab. All right, so I've got my drill here. Got a couple of screws, and they're just uh, short little screws like this. I believe they're four millimeter long, so they're just going to be long enough to go into the sole, but not go past the sole because we don't want these to be stabbing anybody in the foot. And they're a little bit on the wider side, kind of like a wood screw would be usually. I'm not tightening these down all the way yet. We take into consideration all the equal weight distribution or pressure distribution of these screws so that everything lines up nicely. So it's kind of like when changing out the uh, tire on a car, you go back and forth and back and forth type of thing. Well, you don't really go back and forth because there's only three screws here, but you still want to um, make sure everything is lined up before you try forcing any other screws tightened in quite a bit. There we go. Okay, let's see how well this thing is sitting. Again, once uh, once we have the tilt plate on, we gotta give a few taps in certain areas, just a little bit, not a lot, just a little, to give it just enough to settle into place nicely. But okay, oops, sorry. There you go. Don't know if you guys are seeing that. Sorry, a bunch of stuff in the way. But that's how we put on the toe plate. So we've got all these uh, corner pieces, of course, sticking out, and that's normal. Here at the very end, it's almost, almost, almost flush. There's just a little bit left. And so now at this point, we're going to have to sand out the edges. I still have to do the other boot real quick, but we're going to sand out the edges, get it all flush, and then continue on. So we'll see you back here in just a little bit then, or at the sander, actually. We'll see you. All right. All right, so we're over our, uh, one of our sanders here. This is our 100 grit, so it's a little bit smoother. And uh, it's time to go ahead and trim up all that extra right here that's sticking up. And uh, we're going to start out on the belt here, and then we're going to move up higher on top of the machine. We have what's called a numb keg, and it just does, does a little bit of extra final touch-up. But I definitely wanted to make sure to show this off because there's tons of sparks and everything flying. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Yeah. <laughs> 
So we've got to sand it up. Now we're just going to do some final touches on the numb keg. It's very hot. Do not touch. I just did another pair right before these ones and accidentally grabbed it because that pair we were doing full soles on. So I had to shift the shoe around and I managed to reach around and grab right here as a habit. Um, well, on the plate. I'm not going to show me touching it actually. It was very hot. But uh, let's switch over to the numb keg and you'll get to check out what that looks like. All right. So this is uh, what's called our numb keg up here. Oh, sorry, I shook the whole thing here, but uh, it's just a portion of the machine. It's a separate machine actually that sits on top of our main one here and just spins around like this. It's great for doing some final touch-ups and everything. And especially with that, with this, because there are small little um, corner pieces that are, they're not sharp, but, uh, but it'll be a little bit of a sharp corner left over if we don't uh, take care of that in other words so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right there we go much better I'd run my finger across it, but again, still very hot. And, uh, you know, it, I know I'm confident that it's not sharp or anything. I'll touch it for a quick second there, but still very warm. But at this point, I'm going to set it aside, let it cool off, and then we can finally start doing the edge ink on that toe, match it up in color, and then go through and varnish it all and so wax it all across. So it's a little more uniform. If we just do this one section alone with the wax, it ends up looking off a little bit. So we'll put the edge ink on just the toe area so that it can absorb and give a base coat for that uh, uh, section there of the edging. And then afterwards, when we start uh, varnishing that toe, we might go through and hit the other edges and then finally start to buff it all as well. So it looks a lot more uniform. But again, let me set this aside so that it cools off and uh we'll be back in just all right a so we're back here again with these um i ended up having to run home it was the end of the day when i was getting ready to finish these out but ended up having to leave but at this point we're ready for the um edge ink so there's a few different things i'd like to mention about that um edge ink what we use or this is actually edge varnish i'm sure i'm sorry but there's also edge ink um, edge ink is a little bit more liquidy. It's got a dye pigment that's designed to penetrate deeper into the leather. Um, but a varnish ink works great for us because we have varnish wheels that help really get that wax in there and everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, touch up that area that we had sanded out. Obviously it's gonna get all over the place a little bit here and there. And so I got a rag here. Grab it and wipe it all off because it's it's a little bit too much edge ink on there all at once. So we want to want to make sure we wipe that all off quickly and just like that. So it's still rough looking, little frizzies from the towel all over the place. But I'm gonna let that sit there for just a few minutes. This kind of gives us our our base, in other words, and. Uh, what we're relying on to restore the color is really the wax that we use and I'll, I'll let you see what that wax looks like here in just a minute once we move back over to the machine here but I just wanted to show that to everyone beforehand okay all right so we're gonna switch over to the machines here and uh, continue okay so uh, we're over at our shine machine here, or one of them at least, and we've got what's called the varnish wheel here. It's basically, as you can see, layers of leather that are stacked up, and um, it spins really fast, and due, the fr due to the friction, we're able to melt this harder wax down so that we can get it to varnish into the leather, and it's basically forced into the fibers and then creates a nice smooth surface. Now, as far as the wax that we're using, this is what's called a Yankee wax, and it's uh, just straight hard wax. So there's uh, no solvents in here to soften it up or anything. It sits out here in the open. It's not in a container or anything. So we definitely need something that's going to, you know, melt that wax, and the varnish wheel is what's going to do that. Um, after the varnishing, we'll touch up with the nylon brush here on the very end, and we'll go through kind of the whole 
Sorry for the interruption there, um, but where did I leave off on? I think I was talking about yeah, the nylon brush here. That will kind of help spread and even out the waxes a little bit more um, and get this uh, to be all uniform completely. And then we'll finish off on the horsehair brush right here to really buff it up and bring out more of that shine. Now th this edging originally from the factory is not too shiny, so we're going to try to keep it that way. We don't want to overpower that shiny or duller look, in other words, with a shined finish and, and the upper, you know, is going to be the same for now. So. Okay, so uh, it seems to blend in a little bit better there. Oh, sorry, I don't even know if that was on camera. Seems to blend in, right? Now we just gotta clean up that little bit of wax there on that metal because it actually comes off very easily and then it just looks horrible when it's not cleaned up. Um, clean up that area there and then we're gonna touch up because you always got a little small amount of discoloration that you can see here from the leather neutral color right there and we're gonna go ahead and touch that up with some cream polish real quick so let's move back over the work workbench then. all right so we're back over at the workbench now and we're gonna go ahead and grab our turpentine here get a little bit closer for you just very lightly Clean it up. That's why having a nail, fingernail or two, comes in handy with those. Come on. I mean, like right now, it definitely looks nice with having that wax there, and you know, not having to. Um, um, have that silver being so visible or anything but we do have to again take into consideration the fact that we're expecting these to last for quite some time and once that wax starts breaking off and it's gonna start breaking off fairly quick it's gonna be a lot more choppy looking in other words so better to kind of nip it in the butt see it looks looks nice but then you see it at certain angles and that brown just kind of sticks out or it's missing in other words so we're just going to touch it up a little bit beforehand clean it up make it nice looking clean off the bottom and voila okay now we're going to grab a little bit of the saphir model dio tio i guess properly pronounced Pomadier cream. This is the number 10 cognac. Seems to match that color a lot better on the bottom of the sole. And then I'm just going to grab a little bit of a Q-tip here. I mean, I could use a rag, but it gets uh, gets a lot more of it on the surfaces. So grab a Q-tip here. And it's not much. It's just a just a little bit around this area if I notice any spots or anything that may have the regular leather color, the neutral color showing through. And now I'll just take this rag, wipe off the excess. Yeah, because at certain perfect angles you can see I don't know if you guys can see it but at just that perfect angle you can see where the uh, regular leather color is showing through and we want to make sure that we kind of 
cover that. Again, it's just aesthetics, but nothing major. I want it to look nice. I'm happier when it turns out nicer looking. Okay, there we go. I really gotta work at trying to get it in there because it's such a tight squeeze, in other words, already. You really have to work at trying to get some of that cream in there. Again, very minor aesthetics. It's a tight squeeze already, but I wanna I want these to go out the door and be shipped to the gentleman. Looking nice and perfect. So let me go uh, do one last final buff on these on the outside, buff that up to make sure it's all shiny and uh, we're just about fit. All right, so just did one last final quick buff up real quick on that. There we go. Not shiny too much. I mean, it's got a little shine of course, obviously, but I didn't go like crazy trying to buff it and make it shine like crazy on this one. Um, it's already got a shine, it's metal that's been buffed out at the manufacturer on this. So trying to do some kind of other buffing, I'm going to take off a lot more of that brass finish on there and it starts turning silver colored. But anyways, that's how we do the Triumph tote plates on a pair of Cobbler Union ankle high boots. Um, you know, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Don't forget, as always, to subscribe and hit that notification bell icon if you're interested in seeing more videos like this and uh, see how shoes are recrafted, how they're put together. Um, you know, our Soul Talk Sunday, we talk about different sole variants and everything. And overall, Cobbler Union, very nice, well-built shoe, uh, especially for that price point. Very awesome build for it. Uh, there are a lot of other great brands out there too, so definitely stay tuned as we're working on different brands. We'll talk more and more about different types and uh, go from there. But if you're uh, wanting us to work on any of your footwear, always feel free to go to our website, cobblersplus.com. All of our information is on there to get in contact with us. If your local swing on by, we'd be happy to help. Um, and uh, we'll just see everyone next time once uh, we're working on our next project. Thanks for watching.